Hey guys, Steve Pinto here, counselor, coach, and speaker on self-reliance, and today we're talking about the four parts of the personality that really motivates people. Today, I just wanted to do, I was, I was thinking I've done this before, I've spoken about leadership and motivation, and I've really broken it down into four categories, and today I just wanted to kind of go over those categories, just in terms of how I set those things up. The, the, the real big thing is, when you look at people and, and how they go and what makes them make decisions, is a lot of times it's their thinking and and we break things down and I look at their thinking and you know help them explore what are the things that they think about most often and, you know and how that thinking kind of moves towards how they're feeling because we have thoughts right and then those things lead to emotions and people feel a specific way and then we do specific things and, and this kind of formula that I've devised is kind of something that it's adapted from other things but I, I think it's really poignant and I've broken it down into this really four step process to what what helps people kind of follow through in life what helps people uh, you know get motivated you know it's the first of the year it's the biggest time where everyone said those New Year's resolutions we spoke about that last week and uh, oftentimes people don't follow through on those things and you know it, this is something that I think can really help people not only follow through but remain consistent in their lives with some of the things that they like to accomplish and you know uh, whether it's some big grand goal that we're looking and we're moving towards it's this long-term thing or uh, whether it's just something that we want to move kind of on a short-term uh, level so actually there's gonna be an ebook that I'm writing that's coming out about that I'm working it out right now so I wanted to kind of start here I've really broken it down into four parts, and if you think of this triangle uh, kind of as the person, right, as the personality, and the first part of it is, and really focusing on the top of this triangle, is that the first part is really our goals, right? So those are things that people uh, really feel comfortable talking about, right? This is the first part of that, you know, you can you can substitute goals in there for the thoughts, the things uh, that we, we set to do in life. So these are things that people are really willing to talk about and willing to share. The, the things that we say we want to do, whether that's something that's big, like I want to save money for a house, or you know, I want to lose you know 25 pounds this year, or whatever it is that I want to advance in my career. Those are the things that people really discuss. That's the the surface of of what we consider uh, what motivates people is that we set something up, right? We do this every first of the year. We set something up. We we set this goal, something that we want to achieve, right? And that's the thing that we feel most comfortable talking about. The thing is that. That's not the biggest part about what motivates people. You know, we could have the best of gold, but we know people don't necessarily accomplish them. So it goes a bit further. And the second part is, is we, we start to really look at perceptions. And, and when we look at perceptions, that's a bit deeper in terms of the personality. So goals are based upon the way we see the world. And that makes a lot of sense, right? If we, you know, see the world uh, as that, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm fortunate, that's going to lead us to achieving or setting different goals, right? But if we look at the world as, you know, things, not always good things happen to me or I'm always getting the short end of the stick, you know, that's going to lead to, to different goals. So none of this is good or bad, right or wrong stuff. It's just how do our perceptions shape our goals, right? So we can kind of start to do some work here. So if you look at the perceptions you have in life, how you perceive the world, right? Uh, one way common people perceive money is that money can be the root of all evil, right? Um, per common perceptions can also relate to how we go about viewing the things that we want to achieve in life. So we kind of want to work downward in terms of where all the work is in terms of us really making a change and making a shift. So you see, if we perceive you know, our, our problem or situation or a goal that we want to have in a specific way, it can set us up for success. But we go a step deeper, and, and really, the biggest part of our work is in three and four, and I'll show you what I mean. Everything really above this line, really up here, you know, if you can see that, you know, this is these are all things that are, are conscious, that we're really aware of, that you don't really need to do much digging or, de you know, digging to find out. If you talk to somebody, hey man, what are you looking to achieve this year, or hey, what are you working on, or, you know, you talk to someone about how they perceive the world, and, you know, they talk about how they view... You know, everything from money to their job, to career, to family, to children, you know, they, they, they can talk pretty openly about this because it's kind of at the tip of our tongue in our culture, right? But these two parts, everything deep and, and kind of in this part of the triangle, this is the part of where biggest change happens. So, you know, number three is really looking at beliefs, okay? So our beliefs are, this is the root of anyone who makes change, right? So if you look at the way that we perceive and we believe about the world, you know, this is this is the root of what allows people to really hit their goals. 
because it underlines and it supports the upper part of our personality, the upper part of the way we think. So I give you an example, right? If someone believes that um, they're having difficulty in their job because uh, their boss isn't a good person, right? Um, that's going to set them up, right, to perceive the world and the goals that they have in a different way, the things that they're very conscious of. But if someone believes that uh, something happened to them in life, maybe they went through a divorce or their struggle, and they believe that the reason that happened is in order for them to be stronger or uh, I am a resilient person having that kind of belief. It can set them up to achieve different things in life. So what I ask is that if you explore what your root beliefs are, the way you perceive the world, you know, the, what, you, what you believe about, you bring about, right? That old line, right? What we think about, we bring about. And if you can get to the root of what your beliefs are, it's actually going to set us up that these things will start to kind of change automatically. You know, so that's the really cool part about it. But, you know, I, I worked uh, a lot with anger management. And, and when I would work with, you know, a lot of these angry men and women, and we would talk about the biggest thing I told you, if you want to piss somebody off, is that you, you, you kind of press on their belief system, right? That's the old thing is that the two things you're never supposed to talk about, you're never supposed to talk about uh, politics, right, and religion, right? Because the roots of politics and religion are all belief systems. So. That's why those are gentle topics, is because if I get close to your beliefs, that's when people really start to either get, uh, they get offended, they get motivated, they get charged up. You know, if I say, you know, something like, you know, I, I press on like, this is the way it is about a particular religion, or this is the, this is the best political belief, especially now during our political climate, right? Um, it could start to, those things inherently affect people. So we find the beliefs is one of the biggest motivator. Right? If someone goes to, you know, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and, you know, some of this is the first place we go, we speak about, well, what are your beliefs about trying to achieve? Well, I don't know. It's, it's really difficult, you know, right? The first thing we talk about is that paycheck. It's like, Steve, I work for somebody else, you know, and I, I don't necessarily like it all that much, but, you know, there's a paycheck in the mail every two weeks and, you know, it's a steady income and that's all true. And, you know, I, I don't know if I could achieve that myself. And we start to really look at beliefs because goals are good. You know, this is where we're going, but this is going to be our fuel in our tank. And, you know, this is the biggest piece. And the reason that I draw this line here is because down here, this part of the triangle, this part of the triangle is what fuels the upper part. So the last but not least, and this is really important, and this is the root of all this stuff, and this is common, right? This is our identity. Fix this over here, right? Our identity. And our identity is the root of all of this stuff, what we believe we are. Our nature, our self, this goes back to, right, Freud made a career on this, right, in psychology. You know, so our identity is supports this whole big picture. But it's a really hard question, right? If you're thinking to yourself now, it's like, well, Steve, what the heck do you mean? Well, it's not like we can sit here and we can really put to words what our identity is. We find our identity in things, right, in our relationships. We find our identity in the people that we attract in our lives, find our identity in things that we love to do, in our passions. I'm going to talk about passion and purpose, but really, the biggest reason that beliefs are the ultimate motivator is because if you think of it, just real quickly, if a belief grows, like in this section, right, if we have a belief in here, and that belief grows, and that belief is not that is not reflective of our identity, and we start to extract that, or we pull that belief out, and say that belief says, um, I am not good enough, or the belief says, you know, um, I am a fearful person, or I don't deserve love. Whatever those beliefs are, or money's the root of all evil, whatever those beliefs are, if that belief is inaccurate, it's based upon our identity. And if that belief really gets us jammed up, then who am I really, right? Our identity becomes challenged. And this is, this is what people call a midlife crisis, an identity crisis. It's like, well, well, who am I? I tried that and I still can't exceed, right? I still can't achieve the things that I want to be able to achieve. So what are the big takeaways? Okay, the big takeaways are, first and foremost, it's important to set goals, right? That's the stuff that people talk about. Secondly, is how do you perceive those goals? How do you perceive life? What's important? What do you prioritize, right? There's a line I use a lot. What we prioritize, we actualize, right? So what are, we, what are our priorities in terms of goals? Because if our goals and our priorities aren't in line, then we're going to feel disconnected. If my goal is to go to the gym and lose 25 pounds, but I'm not making that a priority, and right? If I'm not 
how I view that, if that's not a prior, priority in my life, and those things aren't going to be aligned, I'm not going to achieve them. Right? So that's a really big important, but ultimately we want to focus on these two areas. We want to look at what do we believe about these goals? What's our belief? Because this is the fuel in our tank. And when we get these two things to align, we're going to feel aligned. We're going to feel like we have purposes because that's ultimately you know, the, the fuel that's going to get us to be motivated. Especially in 2017, January, right? People are, you know, people are already falling off. Gyms are getting lighter already. But you know, the biggest thing is, is that people feel most comfortable when these two things are aligned. Think of a time in your life where you felt totally energetic and you felt excited or you felt, I totally, it's because what you believed about the way the situation should be, my car should be here on time, or I should have dinner, or my food should be hot, or I should have a house, whatever those beliefs are, and it matched the, what your root personality is. It matched the root of how you grew up and that internal blueprint that you have for the way the world should be. And when these two things match up, that's when we feel most confident being able to achieve things. So just being aware of these four parts, right, our goals, our perceptions, our beliefs, and our identity can really start to motivate change. So if you can align these things, what does this goal say about you as a person, right? It's a great question. What's this goal say? And how are these beliefs relating to these goals and who I genuinely am? This is going to start to create that internal motivator. It's like that light switch. You can just get, feel engaged and feel pulled to be able to accomplish something. So thank you guys for coming out and checking out uh, the four part series. Once again, it's really helping ourselves match up our goals, our perceptions, and our beliefs, and our identity and get those things aligned so we can help achieve our goals. I hope this four part helps in kind of understanding how when we get these things aligned, our beliefs can really motivate us to achieve our goals. So thank you guys again and I'll see you guys soon.